So we've been talking about maps. That was our last lecture. Although I don't see it listed up there. Come on. Get to M. We used. It is recording, is it not? Good. All right. We used a tree map, which is a sorted map, and we just put some numbers in it, right? So you can use maps for kind of two purposes. One is to collect a large set of data over different things, or another is to collect a set of information about one thing, like attributes of one thing. And I'll give you an example of that. Let's go ahead and make a new project. No, no, no. We know we're going to need tree map class and everything else. So, what is this tree map going to be? It's just going to be strings, two strings. Tree map less than string comma string greater than let's call it male equals new tree map less than greater than parentheses in parentheses semicolon and since it doesn't know what a tree map is we need to add import for java.util.tree map why don't we just save ourselves some trouble and make that java.util.asterisk Okay, so what we did last time is use the tree map to contain like a collection of data, a collection of numbers or whatever. Well, that's what they're for, right? But you can have also a collection of attributes that describe a single item, right? Like one particular email. So like we could do mail dot put parentheses. Oh, let me guess, it's not the... Uh, Really? I see it right there. It's put. Come on. Dot put parentheses. The subject of the email is. This is not spam. Of course, you believe that. Mail dot put parentheses quote to end quote comma and we're sending this to Joe at gmail dot com. Lucky Joe. Not main dot put mail dot put right. And then mail dot put parentheses quote from right or sender end quote comma and this was sent at best at hotmail.com and so on right I typed main in again my finger likes to go in there we go right whole bunch of different things about this tree map so we could create more and more and more male tree maps we might want to add them to an array we might want to add them to an array list and I'm honestly not sure how I would create an array list of tree map objects like that. I don't know if it would be as easy as doing this or not. Array list parentheses tree map greater than mailbox equals new array list less than greater than parentheses in parentheses semicolon. It actually took that cool deal and let's put mailbox dot add that mail to it right just like that what are you complaining about oh yeah of course all right so there we go right and we could keep creating more and more email tree maps to put in there now is that really how I would solve the problem probably not I would probably create a class that had subject and to and from. But the specs for 
the email system that the, uh, the world still uses and was invented in the 70s, a lot of headers are optional. SMTP headers. SMTP stands for like simple mail transfer protocol or something like that. Custom header reference. They can have all sorts of headers. If you've ever opened up an email like from in Gmail and it says view complete headers, you'll see a whole bunch of things in there. This isn't this isn't floating my boat. I'm not liking what I see here. Take one more stab at finding it. So like from, from alias, from domain, sender email, sender alias, sender domain, and there's far, far more than that. Here we go, like mime version, content type, content transfer encoding, but not all emails have these things, right? Some of them just have a few lines. Some of them have a whole bunch of stuff, a message ID, a return path, and the mail software that you use or the mail servers between where you're sending to and where you're adding some Look cute, subject, look younger while losing weight. We sure are trying to avoid uh, the spam filters there, aren't we? So anyways, in the uh, servers that the uh, mail is being shuttled to, it keeps adding their own headers to it, right? So anyways, so if you have something that has disparate traits, right? Maybe a known collection of disparate traits, it might be silly to make a class because this what if you had a thousand different headers and you didn't know which ones were going to be used? Then storing them in a map might be the way to go. So that's one use of a map, is to hold different pieces of information about one object. What would happen if we printed out that array list? I'm just totally curious. System.out.println parentheses mailbox. And then for giggles, let's also print out the mail. System.out.println in parentheses mail, in parentheses semicolon. So there's our, I'll bring it back up, but there's our array list, which has a tree map as one of the items in it. And that's the item that's in the array list, which makes sense, right, that they look the same. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's one use of an array list. Another is that you could create like a histogram of the uh, letters that are appearing like in a string, you know, or, you know, a, some text. You open a file and you read in a file and you would find out how many A's are in there as opposed to how many E's as opposed to how many F's and so on. That's a histogram. So let's make a string and just call it text and put some text in here, right? Like, I wonder if this will really work. Period, end quote, semicolon. And let's create a tree map that maps letters to their occurrence. So we're going to need, like, well, we could just use the character class, right, to hold one letter. Or maybe we could store that letter in a string and use a string. I'm more comfortable sticking it in there as a string for some reason. So let's make a tree map that is a, a string and an integer. So the keys are going to be the individual letters like an I and a W and an O etc. And the integer is going to be the count. What's our tree map going to be called? Let's just call it letters letter count, something like that. Equals new tree map, less than greater than, parentheses, parentheses. Okay, now we need to step through that string one character at a time. That'll just be a simple for loop. This seems familiar. Did we do that? No, no, I did that in uh, my Java 1 course. For parentheses int i equals zero semicolon i is less than the length of the string so 
T E X D text dot length parentheses in parentheses semicolon I plus plus. Let's get out that character. We're going to use care at to do that. So string ch is equal to, and this isn't going to quite work. I'm going to have to make a mod to it. Text dot care all lowercase at with a cap capital A parentheses i in parentheses semicolon. I think it's going to complain that this is returning a, sh a string. Excuse me, this is returning a character, and I'm trying to store it in a string. There's all sorts of ways you could do that, but honestly, the easiest way to convert something to a string is just to add it to an empty string like that. So, double quotes, nothing between them there. We're going to check to see if that character is actually in the tree map. If it is not, it is the first time it has occurred. If it is, then we're going to increment the number of times it's occurred. So let's check if parentheses letters dot contains key with a capital K parentheses CH then it's in the box else I'm going to go back in and fill that in in a minute because this is the real easy part we're going to insert it into the tree map. We're going to put it into the tree map with a count of one because this is the first time we've encountered that letter. So letters dot put parentheses ch comma one in parentheses. It defaulted to an I, but that's just NetBeans taking a wild guess as to what I wanted in there. What if it's already in there? Well, then I want to extract that number with a get, and then I want to put it back in there, increase by one. So how about we get the count? Int count is equal to letters dot get parentheses, and our key is ch. Let's add one to it, count count, or count plus plus, and let's put it back in there. Letters dot put parentheses ch comma count. See what we're doing? If we find it in there, we grab the count, we add one to it, and we put it back in. And yeah, we could probably rewrite that so it was a single line, but we're not going to do that. In Python, it would be super easy to write it as a single line, but I'm not convinced it would be here. It'd certainly at least be an embedded function within a, a method within a method call, and I don't feel like doing that. And let's just print out our letters tree map at the bottom. Nothing fancy. Let's just print it out with system dot you know print line. We could uh, worry about printing pretty printing it in a minute. System dot out dot print line letters. All right, and here we go. There were six spaces in it. There were one period in it. There was one uppercase I. There was one lowercase I. Let's make something with a lot more letters in it, just for giggles. So text plus equals when in the course of human events, end quote, text plus equals Voldemort and Harry have a showdown, period, right? Just so that we'll see some numbers other than one. There we go, right? There were 18 spaces in it. What if we didn't want all of these non-punctuation characters? And what if we wanted to convert the letters to uppercase so that it didn't count lowercase i and uppercase i differently? 
why don't we check to see if it's a letter or a digit or maybe we only want letters but let's inspect it if we possibly can I probably should not have stored it as a string this early in the game so let's change this up just a little bit and I'm sorry about that but let's do this care ch equals text.careAt and let's test it. You know what? If we stored it as the wrapper class, we'd probably be able to just do things like is alpha or is digit. So character ch is equal to text.careAt. Let's test it. If ch dot is not not finding what I'm looking for okay that was a waste sorry we're gonna have to use the wrapper class anyway so we could have just left it inside a, a normal care so if character uppercase C dot is alf is well let's rule out spaces so is space space character right is space care then we don't want it. Just continue. Continue means skip everything, go back to the top of the loop. Let's also check, I mean, we probably could do away with that check based on what the next one's gonna be. It's gonna say if not character and not digit, right? Because we only want letters and digits. So we probably didn't even really need that one, but I don't mind just seeing it there. So if not character dot is alphabetic, parenthesis ch, and not character dot is digit, in parentheses, in parentheses, I seem to have goofed something. Oh, I forgot to put the date in there. So, and character dot is digit, parentheses, ch, in parentheses, in parentheses, then continue. So that first one's not even really necessary because if it's not alphabetic and it's not is digit, then it's, you know, who cares if it's a space or not? It's certainly just not a character or a digit. All right, and now we have the problem that we're trying to put in ch, and it's a string, not a character. So we're going to have to convert that to a string right on the fly. I wish I'd remembered that up here in advance, giving that a different name. I didn't. So let's just do string space seh, standing for string care. Sorry is equal to empty quote plus ch and then change these erroneous references that ch to be sch that one to be sch and that one to be sch and that one to be sch right because they all needed to be a string after that point So if you ever remember like in Python writing a program that checked to see if something was a valid password by counting the number of periods or special characters and making sure it didn't have any spaces and seeing if it had upper and lower case and so on. You'd do something like that. All right, that's looking better. There's no punctuation in our output here. We still haven't handled uppercase and lowercase. So we need to convert our character to an uppercase. That ought to be pretty easy. SCH is equal to SCH dot to uppercase. Parentheses, in parentheses, semicolon. Right? It's kind of bugging me that we have this here and it's not necessary. So I don't know whether to comment it out or delete it. I guess I'll just delete it. 
and i'll add a comment here make sure it is either a letter or a digit if not just continue the loop convert to string this is pretty obvious right make uppercase is the letter in our tree map yes increment account else no set the count to one all right I hope that made sense you could do a, the same kind of thing where you opened a file and you read in all the words in a file and you wanted to create a count of all the words right something like that I don't know that we need to do anything more with this than what we already have there. How are we doing on our typing game? How many people have I lost? That makes sense. You're getting the idea of a tree map, I really hope. How it's a pair of keys and values. Each key is unique. So that's why I'm able to just keep adding, you know, account for A. It doesn't put two A's in there. It just replaces the already pre-existing A that's in the tree map and so on. All right, while I'm thinking about it, not that this is germane to tree maps at all, unless we use this as our example rather than letters, but what if you have a string that looks like this? Text is equal to hello, comma, goodbye, comma, test, comma, fun, comma, Java. And we wanted to turn that into an array or an array list for processing. We can do that. Let's convert that into an array of strings. So string, that's how you declare an array. Elements or words equals text dot split. And how are you going to split it? Based on commas. So quote, comma, end quote, end quote. So if we split out our, excuse me, if we print out our words now, we'll see that it's a nice array that we could run through. And we can do the same kind of tree map operation on words rather than just letters. System.out.println parentheses the words. All right, now here's something that I don't remember covering, which is what if you want to convert an array to an array list all in one fell swoop? Is it as easy as this? I'm not sure. There may be an extra step required. Array list of string, word list, equals new array list, parentheses in parentheses, parentheses and let's pass our words array into it. Is that cool or is that an error? Eh, it looks like an error. Cannot infer the type arguments for array list. Why not? How about we call that string then? No suitable constructor found for an array. Okay, fine. We'll convert it to a regular old list to begin with. So list of string, list string, word list, <laughs> equals arrays dot as list parentheses words. See what this is doing? 
we're using the arrays class to convert our words array into a list. And then we can certainly add that. Now I have a problem here because I have two variables with the same name. This was called word list and this is also called word list. So how about we call this word array list, right? There we go. And then you can do all the good stuff that you normally want to do with an array list. Now, honestly, I don't recall why you would prefer to use an array list rather than a list because you ought to be able to do the same thing. You ought to be able to step through it with a for each loop. You know, for parentheses string s for every string in the list in parentheses print it out. Oh, why did I do that? Word list. For every string in the word list, just print it out. System dot out dot print ln parentheses quote word equals end quote plus s. Right. We sure are offering make a lot of changes here. Wrap array using arrays to string. Why? Undo that. Let's check the next one. Redundant type arguments. Okay, yeah. I didn't need to put that string there. That was redundant. So I took it out. And this is just going to be re replaced with functional operation. I'm leaving that one alone. I'm really not understanding this one. Why do they want to do it like that? Well, whatever. We feel like it. Great. Yeah, because arrays.toString will convert this array to a string. But on the other hand, that converts it to a string just fine and dandy by calling the arrays.toString method. All righty. Oh, no, it didn't. That's why. I forgot. Array lists get printed out nicely, but raw arrays just print out that. So let's accept its change. Much better. Okay. Trying to just show the utility of these classes and how you might convert from one thing to another. And you Python programmers have got, used dot .split before. That ought to look real familiar. You would create a list from a delimited string like that. So hopefully that's, that's real clear. Creating an array list from an array, I really thought it was easier than uh, doing it like that. I want to take one more step at poking around with it. So word underscore array list. And I'm just totally exploring here add all based on a collection. I think we already know that that's not going to work because it wants a collection. An array is not a collection. It sounds like it, but a collection is, it a, is an array list or a tree map or one of those things. Nope. You can convert it to an array, but you can't bring it in as an array, and that's confusing. What would have happened, this is another experiment, if I had just done arrays as list here and use that to feed this? So I'm going to try that, and then I'll probably wind up having to undo it. Yeah, that doesn't work. Well, why do you have to convert it to a list before you can stick it in an array list? Don't know. Okay, let's stop fussing with that. Leave our code here. All right, gang, I believe we're done with the chapter. Let's go and take one more peek at it.
Okay, that's a queue. We've done queues. They didn't even have an example of a tree map. They just briefly mention it and then roll it by. All righty. And then we have our incredibly difficult quiz. What method do you add an element into an array list? Well, the word insert is an interesting term. I don't think we did an insert into the middle of an array list. And that's one of the reasons why you would want to use an array list is the ability to insert. You can add, which tacks it on at the end, or you can insert into it. And when you call insert, you specify what index number, what index position you want it to be. And if you call insert dot zero, I mean, uh, you know, insert into the zero, it winds up being the beginning of the list. Let's play with that. Let's add a new word to our list here. What word are we going to add to it? We had a Harry Potter theme going on, so let's, let's uh, I don't know, add magic to it. So, word underscore array list, and I kept saying add, that's not what we're doing, we're doing an insert. No, we're not. I forgot, it's dot add, but you specify its index position. Zero, comma, magic. Now magic is going to be at the beginning of the list. And so if we just print it out again, print out the list, system.out.println parentheses, word underscore array list in parentheses semicolon, we're going to see the word magic added to it. So the add function to, serves two purposes. You leave that number off, it appends it. If you specify that number, it goes into that specific spot. And there we go, right? So, I had the quiz question wrong. It's not insert, it's add. Which AVI provides the best implementation of a stack? Well, they used an array queue for their stack. An array deck for their stack. And uh, I'm not sure if they ever explained why. I think it's because stack is an interface. Did they explain why? Must be in the book why they chose to use array DQ, DQs for a stack. But it does have, if we find the class that's implementing it, push and pop and size and peak. So it really has everything that you need in order to do it. Does the linked list also have those? I thought they did. Yeah. Okay, fine. Let's Google this. I mean, heaven forbid I actually open the book and find out, so let's Google it. The Java framework provides a stack class. All right, if we had a stack class all along, then why in the world were we using array DQ. Well, let's prove that it works. And then I'm not going to ask a question which one's the best, because the book seems to have two examples, and I'm not going to open the textbook to find out. But anyway, stack of integers, st equals new stack, less than, greater than, all right, st dot push a three onto it, st dot push a 4 onto it, and then int i equals st dot pop, parentheses in parentheses. All right. Well, I'm a little bit chagrined. I thought that there was a stat class, but then when I looked at that uh, page in the PowerPoint, it convinced me to use DQ, but you got to assume that something with the name stack is going to be ideal. <laughs> Let's see if we can find where stack is in the Java collection hierarchy. 
stack Java collections higher. How do you spell hierarchy? I'm not sure that's Java. Yeah, I guess it is. Array list and vectors are a form of an abstract list. And a stack is a form of vector. See, so where's DQ in that? Much better. Huge one. Except this print's too small to see. All righty. So if the print was not too small to read, see, lists make up array lists and linked lists and vectors. Queues, priority queue is an implementation of queue. Array deck comes from DQ. Hash set comes from set interface. How do we get over here? linked hash set, tree set, hash map, and I'm not seeing stack on here. Okay, forget it. Mystery to me is why you would use a radio queue if you have a stack class. Unless one of them is thread safe and the other is not. And I'm not going to go look. All right. Which type of object can be used for the key of a Java map? All of the above. Let's see which one fails. I mean, they're all three reference types, right? Maybe set. Set is looking like the most suspicious. We know that integers work as the key. I thought you could use any object as the key, but if the idea of using a list as a key is pretty weird. I would go with A, but I want to prove it experimentally. So, wait, wait, wait. Java map, okay. So tree map made out of a list. TM equals new. Oh, and I forgot to put its, uh, that's the key. So an integer might be its value. Is equal to a new tree map. See? <laughs> All three answers are correct. But using a list, using a structure with a large number of elements as your key is pretty weird. I don't know why you would ever do that, but it's possible because it's a reference type just like any other one. There's absolutely no way I'm going to try to use that. I mean, we do have a list up there, right? We created a list at this point. But we could add it to the tree map with a put, but it's pretty silly. Right, we could put our word list in there and we could put the number 10 in there. There we go, right? That's an absurd thing to do. What do you normally do? You use your key as an identifying characteristic. Like you might make a student class or, you know, let's make a rat class yet again. And we're just going to put the weight and the age of the rat in there. So class rat. Yes, I'm putting it right here. Int weight double weight <laughs> int age, right? And we're not going to do anything else with it. We're not going to do anything useful with it except maybe make a uh, a constructor for it, right? So public wrap parentheses double weight comma int age in parentheses and set this dot weight equals weight and this dot age equals age. All right, now we have a rack. And we could create two rats and add them to a tree map and then we could pull it back out right by its name. So scanner sc equals new scanner system.in. 
Let's ask for a rat's name. Let's put this in a while true loop, and if they type in a name of Q, then we're going to quit because apparently we don't ever want to name a rat Q. So while parentheses true in parentheses, let's ask them for the name. System.out.print parentheses quote name of rat question mark or Q to quit colon space in parentheses semicolon string name equals sc dot next now the name had better be only one word only or else this is going to break but I'm not, not going to account for that we would need to use next line but then that raises a specter of having to use next line even for the numeric input and then converting it so we're just going to test it with single word names all right, and if they typed in Q, we're going to quit. So if, parentheses, name dot equals ignore case. If, parentheses, name dot equals ignore case, parentheses, quote, Q, then we're going to break the loop. Else we're going to ask for their weight and their for their age. Realistically, you probably would not use the name of the rat as its key because then you would have to give every rat a unique name. So you probably have a lab rat, lab rat number, right? You know, this is number one, number two, number three, or whatever. Some unique identifier. But let's just roll with this example. Then let's get its weight and its age. System.out.print parentheses quote. What is the rat's age and days? question mark space end quote in parentheses semicolon let's read that in int age equals sc dot next int capital I print statements are so boring I'm gonna copy and paste that one to make it say what is a, a rat's age excuse me weight in ounces or grams pretend we're scientists rate rat that should be rat not rate what is the rat's weight in grams then we can put that in let's get about double weight equals sc dot next capital d double and we can build ourselves a rat and add it to the tree map or to the array list or whatever kind of structure we wanted but I wanted to be able to look it up by its name so let's do that we need a tree map of rats tree map string is our key and rat is our data type I'm gonna call it rat nest equals new tree map parentheses in print wait wait angles then parentheses and in semicolon all right let's create a rat and add it to the tree map so rat nest no rat r equals I was thinking about making an anonymous object but that just make the syntax harder to follow equals new rat and we have a constructor so we can just pass in its age and its weight like that I'm getting an error what did I do wrong I have reversed weight comes before age down here weight comes before age right and let's add it to our tree map rat nest dot put the name of the rat followed by the rat itself when they finally type Q what are we gonna do 
let's ask for a rat information that we are curious about. But first, just for giggles, let's print it out. It's always fun to see our data. System.out.println parentheses rat nest in parentheses. And we could ask for a rat to inspect or a rat to delete. Let's inspect a rat first. So system.out.println, this example is going to take the rest of the class, but that's all right. Print L or print. Enter the name of the rat to inspect. End quote, in parentheses, semicolon. Now we're going to need a variable to hold that. So string name equals sc.next, parentheses, in parentheses. And let's look that rat up. We need to see if that rat exists in the collection. So if, parentheses, rat nest dot contains key, parentheses name, in parentheses, in parentheses, it's a good rat. Let's get it out. Rat r, and then print out its information. I should have added a two string method to it. Rat r equals rat nest dot get by the name, in parentheses, semicolon. And we could print it out. System dot out dot print f parentheses quote percent s percent i for the age percent f for the weight backslash n. We could go in and fill in cute things like name equals percent s, age equals percent i, weight equals percent f, and then between the end quote and the parentheses. Let's print out the thing's name and the rat's age and the rat's weight. So r dot age and r dot weight in parentheses semicolon. Now let's ask them for a rat, something to delete from the tree map. Guess the rat's moving out. Well, let's just run it first. Let's make sure this works. Nope. Array list cannot be cast to comparable. OK, they were right then. Just because the compiler let me create a tree map with a list, shame on me for doubting the book. It did not actually work. So way up here where I tried to create an array list out of a list, that did not work. So delete those two lines right there. The tree map list integer and the tm dot put word list, that crashes it. So I'll just nuke them, delete them, those two lines right there. All right, the name of the rat is Fred. He's 10 days old. He's a big rat. He weighs 1,000 grams. And then Barney is a smaller rat. He's 8 days old. And he only weighs 500 grams. Let's quit. And Barney is, and since I don't have a two string method, it's gobbledygook. I should make a rat two string method in order to make the output look nice. Enter the name of the rat to inspect. Well, let's inspect Barney. We're not. Format exception. Conversion is equal to i, and it's not i. How do you print a uh, an integer with a printf? D. 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 Correct. Correct. Right. So where I have percent i, wrong language. Make that percent d, and it will run now. All right, the name of the rat is Fred. He's one day old. He weighs two grams. Barney is two days old. Weighs three grams. Quit. Inspect Fred. There we go. And there's Fred. Now it's likely that we would actually also want to put the rat's name in as an element of the rat class, right? Make a rat contain name as well as age and whatever. 
Now let's remove a rat. So let's ask for the name of a rat to remove. System.out.print parentheses quote. Enter the name of the rat to remove. Question mark. I guess these ought to be colons rather than question mark. Whatever. Name equals sc.next parentheses in parentheses. Now how do we remove from a tree map? Well, we better check to see if it's in there. Oh, and I should have had an else here that indicated that it was not in there, right? So else system.out.println parentheses, no quote, name plus quote not found. Fred not found, whatever. Same business here. We're going to have to see if it contains the name again. If rat nest dot contain rat nest dot contains key parentheses name in parentheses. I wonder why in the world it shows SC as its best guess for the variable to use. Then let's delete it. I believe it's dot remove. Rat nest dot remove that name. And we may as well print out that he was deleted. System.out.println parentheses name plus quote space deleted or, or removed. End quote in parentheses semicolon. LC doesn't exist, just like the other one, so I'm just going to copy that print statement where it said not found and paste that as well. I think just to make this example look a little bit better, why don't we add a two-string method to the rat class? Because obviously we're not hitting the next chapter this time. And we may as well print out the rat nest again. So just like this print statement up here, system.out.println rat nest, I'm just going to copy that and paste it here after our deletion. Fred, one, two. Barney, two, three. Now I mistyped Fred and I made it red, so when I look for Fred, it's going to tell me he doesn't exist. Oh, wait. I didn't quit. Okay, fine. Quit. Now I'm going to look for a name that doesn't exist just for fun. Joe, Joe not found. Which rat am I going to remove? Red. There we go. And so the only ones left in the tree map are Barney and Fred. All right. Tell me when it's okay with y'all if I scroll up. Do we need more typing time or can I scroll up? Or are you so infinitely far behind that you don't care? Well, nobody's complaining, so I'm going to go back to the rat class. And why don't we move the rat class to the very top where it ought to be? doesn't need to be part of main. So I'm just going to cut the rat class and paste it up at the top. Cut. Put it above the lecture class. Paste it. I ought to unindent it and all that. And I'm going to add a two string method. It returns a string. So public string two with and then capital S string parentheses in parentheses. And let's re just return Uh, we use we usually use um, string dot format, so why not string dot format parentheses rat age equals percent d weight equals percent f end quote comma this dot age comma this dot weight. Now when it runs and we print out the array list, it'll look a lot nicer. That's why I recommend adding a two-string method for everything because even if you're just printing things out 
as a debug step and you're going to remove it later, it's nice to actually see the data in some format. Even if all you're doing is printing out an ID and a name or whatever rather than every piece of data in your, in your object. All right, I'm going to add Fred. One, two. I'm going to add Barney. Three, four. I'm going to quit. And there we go. See, that looks prettier to me. Barney, rat, age three, wait. Fred, rat, age, okay. I can think of one more change to it, but I'm gonna call this done. How about if I put like braces around our output so it's nicely clustered when we run it. I already had it running and I don't see how to quit it. I know that there's a, supposed to be a quit box down at the bottom. Maybe I need, if I zoom in. Yeah, here we go. Quit, please. All right, now I can run it. All right. Bob, two, three. Cat, four, five. Jig, six. Seven, saw, eight, nine, Q, and there's all my rats. I can inspect one. I'm going to look at jig, and I'm going to delete saw. We're all done. All right. So if I was going to make a homework assignment out of what we've done today, it might be to ask you to write something that would add books to a tree map. You would ask the user for information about a book. You create your book object and you'd insert it into the tree map. And we could turn this into a big project if we wanted to, but when we get around to our Java projects for the second semester, I'll, uh, I'll make something like that to where you can list, you know, type in L and get a list of all the elements in the tree map. And you can type in D followed by a book ID number and it'll delete that item, something like that. But here's the basics of it right here, right? The ability to add things to a tree map, search for them, to remove them. Because you know how to edit it. You would just make a change to the object and you would put it back in with the same name, whatever your key is. All right, let's stop here.